shoulder album he did in the early 80s uh, titled cold on the shoulder I guess that was a title track to that album and that was the kickoff he did and pretty close to the way he played it maybe not exactly but close enough uh, of course he never did play it exactly the same way twice but that's uh, that's pretty much it but I just wanted to do coat on the shoulder to show you this uh, guild I've been talking about. It's a 72 model D25 Cherry. Um, I got it from uh, my wife's uncle. Like I said, passed away probably, I don't know when. Maybe in the 70s or 80s. I, I don't know exactly the whole story about that, but it was left to her and like I said she can't play so when we met uh, there was a guitar in the house and I picked it up and played it of course when back then the strings were so high you couldn't you couldn't really play it but after we got married she brought it with her and I've been playing it ever since uh, I don't play it as much as I used to it needs a fret dressing or possibly the first few frets replaced until he played it uh, mostly on the first uh, three frets probably G, C, and D or A, E, and F and so on but uh, with that little kickoff I'm going to talk about it a little bit and i got a couple more things to talk about try to answer some questions best I can about some previous videos, but um, a little, uh, a little bit about the, the coat on the shoulder kickoff. Uh, this guitar, I don't think, is tuned to 440, but I think Tony Rice did it uh, with a capo on the third fret, and G would make it B flat. And he did a instructional video I'm thinking he did one with uh, with that tune I think he covered the that tune on how to play it how he played it and of course he had better camera angles and and uh, no doubt a lot better teacher than what I'd ever be but I'll go over it anyway for anybody who's interested It sounds like when you do the intro, the first few notes of it, it sounds like a G type run. Uh, and you are rotating off the G notes, the two, the noted and the open. But the rhythm section is going to C. Uh, So while, uh, while the guitar player is doing this, that note there signals the band to go to C. Because a G is in the C scale and it works. Uh, so uh, quick B flat. I'll try to play the rhythm, rhythm section, see if you can keep up with it. Uh,
times he did the the solo in the tune, not the kickoff, but the solo. He'd do it with that little, uh, and what that is is a E flat seventh. He'd just rake down and stop on the B string real fast to land on the C note. made up. <laughs> I didn't pattern after any solo we did there, but just some ideas, and I'll try to go over a few ideas. I hope this video don't run too long, but they usually do. I get started talking and not enough playing. Let's see. Okay, I'll, let, me, let me go over this and try to get things together. Uh, it goes to B flat from C, but there's two different timings there. Uh, the first time around, all you need is time. All you need is time, time, time. Okay, he stayed in B flat a little longer the first time than he will the second time. Let's see. Uh, real quick and jumps back into C. That's one thing to remember on the rhythm section. Usually puts that little uh, note in going to D. And he adds that to the rhythm section too. you can use for if you're playing cold on the shoulder. Fine tune to play. Let's see. Uh, let me see how I would play. Like I said, I don't play it note for note the way he would, but try to add some maybe of his licks in different spots. So let's see. Uh, So a little, uh, one thing I do, and that's straight Tony Rice there, is uh, it's a harmonic on the D, G, and B strings. 
Just let it ring. And come back uh, down two frets and note it. That'd be F. So that's a G harmonic. Tony used these three fingers, let's see. If you want to do it exactly like him, you'd use uh, But I use the pinky uh, ring finger and middle finger to, to do the lick. My keyboard's slipping on me. always tried to use my little finger as much as I can. I noticed early on when I was watching him play, he was constantly using his little finger. And a lot of players can play his stuff with just three, but I like to try to incorporate my pinky as much as I can. And it, it helps on some of his stuff, like, uh, like if you want to add this lick when he's going to D. finger kind of has a fret instead of uh, sharing sharing a, f a fret with this ring finger uh. you can do it that way it's more I guess what you call economical if you could learn to use your all your fingers that's why I use my pinky on that tie. But that's a little bit of cold on the shoulder. Shoulder. Maybe I'd help you. For those who's interested, and I'm sure most of you can play it anyway, you're probably better than I can, but that's just some ideas you can use. And Maybe some licks on the for the solo. Uh, you could start it. That's Tony Rice too. Uh, holding the two strings, bottom strings, with your ring finger, or he just rakes it. give you some ideas anyway. I think that's enough cold on the shoulder. I want to get into trying to answer a couple questions best I can. I got a viewer uh, named Patrick. I've been watching him a long time and he's come a long way leaps and bounds from when he first started making videos of guitar playing. Uh, I think he, I don't know exactly where he's from. Seems like he has a different accent. I don't know if he lives here in the States or, uh, or from a different country. I don't know, but, uh, he asked me, uh, how I cut the through sad, uh, saddle on the Martin. And, uh, I got this guitar right now. <clears throat> Two things you got to remember is, uh, let me see. What I done was I took the, of course, took the strings off and the bridge pins, and I took the existing saddle. I took it out, and I set one side of it upon the bridge, 
and it was sitting kind of kind of like that on top of the bridge to where I wanted it to come to. And I left this side of it down in the slot to keep it straight because <clears throat> that's the most important thing you got to remember is this groove you cut in this bridge has got to be straight with the existing slot. If not, you get your bridge turned, your saddle turned one way or the other, it won't fit, you know, it won't all tie in together. So I set it up here and marked it about where I thought it needed to be, down the edge of that saddle. And I marked it with a, a pencil, lead pencil. I done the other side the same way. I set this side of the saddle up on this bridge and used it for a straight edge to where I thought it needed to be, and then I drawed it Drawed it, outlined it with a pencil. Okay, that's step one. Once I started cutting with my Dremel tool on the bridge itself, I had to I had to follow those lines precise. If not, like I said, if you get it off to the left or right, then it won't work. But uh, you just got to make sure that slot. The, the existing slot now is, is dead straight, perfect straight. So the grooves that you cut here and here to extend it has got to be exactly straight with the existing slot that's there now. I, I know you know what I'm talking about. And uh, step two, most important, second most important thing, is the bottom of this existing slot is dead level. Okay, when you cut these extend these slots, when you stand, extend this bridge slot, the bottom of it can't be higher than the bottom of your existing slot now. Because if it's higher, the bottom of it, then your new saddle is gonna rest on it. Rest here on the bottom. And it won't touch the bottom of this slot that's already cut. So it's gonna take all the weight and when you put tension on the strings, it's just gonna snap your saddle. So if anything, it's it's good, it, it'd be ideal to get it level through there on the bottom all the way across. That'd be the ideal. But even if you get it lower, would be better than, than it being higher because this part don't take any weight anyway. Mostly just uh, looks. But if you can get the, that slot that you cut all the way through, the bottom of it I'm talking about, where your saddle rest, if you can get it all the way through level, where it'll all take even weight, that's ideal. But even if you mess up and go lower on these sides, you're okay. Because it, it'll just be sitting in, in the air, you know, kind of, and don't take any weight anyway. So that's my take on it. But. And another question, I hope that answers your question. Now, I appreciate the question. Um, but uh, another question I had was uh, my mating. Someone wanted to hear the story of uh, how Tommy come to sign it. My wife bought me some Tommy Emanuel tickets. And I went to a uh, concert. Before the concert, there was a meet and greet. Uh, little known to me, I didn't know that you had to buy upgraded, or she didn't know, you had to buy upgraded ticket to meet Tommy. Well, it just so happens the people who put it on, my boss, uh, the people who put it on run a music store, a nice music store. And my boss had bought a lot of uh, instruments off the people who hosted Tommy. He had bought a lot of instruments off him. And uh, actually it was a lady. But anyway, she put on the show and I told her, I went to her and told her I, I didn't know I had to have tickets to see uh, for a meet and greet. And I told her who my boss was. And uh, so she snuck me back and I had my guitar with me. But uh, I was standing in line and 
waiting for him to sign it. I had some Sharpies and everything ready. And I think I was the only one there with a mating. And uh, I took a couple picks, uh, some real good picks. You know what kind I'm talking about. And uh, I gave him some picks and uh, I actually gave him a rattlesnake rattler. People puts down their guitars and stuff. He'd never heard of that. And uh, he wanted to know what that was for, and I told him, and he played my guitar two or three minutes and used a flat pick on it. And he loved the way it was set up. And uh, he said, I can tell by the way your guitar plays, you're a good guitar player. And, but uh, next to him, I'm, I'm nothing, you know, Tommy Emanuel, but no, I wouldn't even play it in front of him. But anyway, he signed it, and I give him them certain kind of picks and uh, pretty high dollar picks. Uh, he loved those, and that's pretty much the story behind it. But, but uh, yeah, it was a pretty good experience getting to meet Tommy and watching him play. And, he played some bluegrass licks. I don't know. I guess, being I had bluegrass picks, he uh, kind of put two and two together, so that's why he played some bluegrass on it. But, yeah, he's the best guitar player I've ever seen in my life or heard is Tommy Emanuel. But, but I wanted to share that little story, so I asked, so I just figured I'd tell you. And thank you for the question. But uh, this video's running way over, but I'll make another video and uh, maybe another Tommy t uh, Tony Rice tune next again. And uh, if you see any licks I do or anything that way you want to know how I play them, just leave me a comment. And I'll try to break them down better in another video. But thank you all for watching, and uh, I'll be back soon as I can. Thank you.